Okay, in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about load-bearing walls. How to identify a load-bearing wall. So the first thing, um, if you have this type of rafter, it's called a truss rafter. You can identify a truss rafter if you go up in your attic and you see the webbing coming in here like this and then you have what they call a gusset. It will have these metal plates attached to wherever there's a uh, where two boards meet. This is called a gusset. They're stamped into the wood. So there would be a gusset here, 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 and here. That would make this a truss rafter, meaning that it was built someplace else and then brought to the job site and set on the structure. Okay? Now, so if we look at that, which of these three walls are load bearing? These two outer walls are going to be load bearing because the rafters are designed to transfer the load down and out. Okay? Now, you say, what about this wall in the middle? Well, this wall in the middle would, be, would not be considered load bearing because this is not, this right here, this point right here is not a bearing point. The bearing points are over here and over here. So you could put any wall in the middle of this room, this big open room, and it would not be a load bearing wall because this is not considered a bearing point. The bearing points are only where they're designed to carry the load, this load of the rafters and whatever goes on top of them down to the ground. So this webbing transfers the load out here and out here. So this wall in here would not be considered a load-bearing wall. Okay? Now, on this type of roof, this one is what they call a stick-built stick -built roof. What is a stick-built roof? A stick-built roof is a roof that is built on the job site. They cut the individual rafters and put them up one at a time. Now, will it have webbing in it? Yes, because you do need support for the rafters. So if you have a load here, it's got be, some of it's got to be transferred. Okay? Now, here's the difference between the stick built and the truss. Yes, you have the bearing points over this wall and over this wall, but these ceiling joists, that's what this is called. This is a ceiling joist. If you see here, there's a line right here, which means that the ceiling joists are cut and they don't go all the way across. So wherever the ends of these ceiling joists land, that would be considered a bearing wall. Okay, so your outside walls are bearing walls because all this weight is being transferred over to there, but all the weight from this ceiling joist is also being transferred to this middle wall. So this wall then would be a bearing wall. Okay, now what about this one? This one does not have a splice above it. So then this wall then would not be considered a bearing point because the bearing point is on each end of the ceiling joist. So if I split my ceiling joist here, bearing is over here and over here, that makes this one a non-bearing wall. Okay, so if you wanted to take this one out, you could take that one out without any issues because the bearing points are there and there. Okay, now if you have a wall that runs, if your ceiling joists are running this way, and then you have a wall underneath here that's running parallel to it, that wall would not be a bearing wall, okay? That would be a non-bearing wall because it's running parallel to these rafters. Even if the wall was underneath a rafter, it would not be considered a bearing wall because the ceiling joist bearing points are on each end, okay? So if it's in between, not bearing. If it's parallel and underneath, it's probably not, it's not going to be bearing wall, okay? 
over here on this one, you can put any wall going any which direction down here and none of them are bearing walls, only the outside two. Here where you have a splice above it for the ceiling joist, then that becomes a bearing wall along with the two outer walls, okay? So bearing wall, bearing wall, bearing wall, any wall in here or here, not bearing walls, okay? So that will give you some idea of what is, how do you can find what a bearing wall and a non-bearing wall is. You can go up, climb up in your attic, look for where your splices are and identify where your walls are and you can determine whether it's a bearing wall or not, okay? Now one of the things you may run into is you may see some of these up here. This is a two by four nailed flat to the rafter and then you have this other one and it, it would be like it would be put right here. So there would be a stiff back that would be right here and then you may have a board running from the rafter to that stiff back, okay? Now, if there's a wall under there, does that make this wall a bearing wall? No, because the stiff back transfers the load over the entire set of rafters that it's laying on. So even though it's running the correct direction, this, is not, this would not be considered a bearing wall because the load is not being transferred to this wall. It's still being transferred to the outer edges of that ceiling joist. Okay, so this webbing and this stiff back is designed to still transfer load over and down. Okay, so that's some of the things that you can look for when determining whether a wall is load bearing or non load bearing walls.